In this section, we will talk about the basics of Kubernetes, a container orchestration platform, check out what parts of Kubernetes are supported in Windows Server 2019, then we will move to the Azure Kubernetes service and create a multi-container deployment. In this video, we will see what Kubernetes is, why you would need it, discuss the basic concepts of Kubernetes and get a simple view of the components of a Kubernetes cluster. Let's get straight to the subject. Kubernetes is a platform for container orchestration that works on top of Docker or other container platforms like Rocket or ContainerD. It was developed by Google for internal use and then it was open sourced. It is now one of the most popular open source projects. Kubernetes does not manage only containers, but also the networks and volumes that the containers use. So, you can orchestrate whole container infrastructures using this platform. When reading about Kubernetes, you will notice that most people also call it K8S. This is because there are 8 letters between the first K and the last S. But why would you need Kubernetes in your environment? Firstly, it can deploy and manage thousands of container instances. So, while with Docker you could deploy a small number of containers and also be able to easily manage them, if the number increases, you will notice that your workflow gets overwhelmed quickly. With Kubernetes or other container orchestration platforms, it is much easier to manage the lifecycle of your large container infrastructure. Kubernetes groups containers into applications. This way, you get out of the mindset of starting the container for the web server, making a second instance of it and starting the container for the database. And get into the mindset of starting the application deployment for a specific app. The rest is handled by Kubernetes. A very useful feature is also auto-scale. Kubernetes can deploy more containers or destroy containers depending on the workload. So no more unresponsive services this Black Friday if you use Kubernetes for your online shop, for example. Besides the fact that it deploys containers automatically based on apps and scales their number based on workload, it also places containers on the appropriate hosts that have the most free resources. And one last big plus in my opinion is that Kubernetes employs configuration as code. All uh, applications, containers and other Kubernetes objects are defined in text files written in the YAML format, which, of course, can be placed in version control. Let's next see some Kubernetes concepts that you should know. Pod. This is the smallest unit of deployment in the Kubernetes world. A pod is a wrapper that can encapsulate one or more containers which share the same volume and network. Deployment. It groups one or more pods that will be deployed together when the deployment is invoked. Service. This is an endpoint that exports ports so that the application is accessible from the outside. And, as stated earlier, all of the components are declared using YAML files. Next, let's see a short explanation of how Kubernetes components tie together. First, we start off with a node or a worker. This is basically a container host that has a container runtime installed. In our case, of course, this is Docker. A node can have one or more pods on it and, as we saw, a pod can have one or more containers. Another important component of Kubernetes architecture is the master node. This is a server that holds the cluster services and components and also an API server 
through which we can interact with and give it commands. The master is in charge of scheduling pods on worker nodes. And since we mentioned worker nodes, let's add a second one to the diagram. Same story here, it can hold one or more pods that are controlled by the master. But how does the master talk to the workers? The cluster services communicate with a service named kubelet that is installed on each Kubernetes worker node. And all of these components, of course, form a Kubernetes cluster. And since a cluster has to do something to earn its keep, we use the API to send commands and also YAML files to the master, which then schedules containers and nodes, creates volumes, creates networks, and any other task that we declare in those configuration files. This was a quick overview of what are the components of a Kubernetes cluster.